the journey with the Horde, right? It, it, it started out as sort of this technical feat, and and could is this something we could pull off? And is there interesting gameplay that could be associated with it? And what would that look like? You know, but it was also a great um, a great aspect for just sort of wrapping a narrative around this dangerous world. When we first started thinking about what was Days Gone going to be, we really wanted to have a unique uh, enemy type. And so, you know, honestly, at the time, you know, like, obviously movies like World War Z were out at the time. And just, you know, the, that huge amount of enemies and that the sort of fluidity of them was something that, you know, I don't think I had ever seen before. I'm not sure anybody had. But the idea of trying to fight something like that, like that many creatures in an open world, where you had to, you know, sort of use the environment, use your skills, use your traps, um, and upgrade your weapons. It was like, it really was just as simple as that. It was like, we wanted an enemy type that was unique to us, that we had never seen before, and the design team loved the challenge of how to make that into something that is not only beatable, but fun, um, was a real design challenge. It's an engineering marvel to pull off that many creatures on screen at once, but there's also a lot of data in order to pull off the vast numbers that we have optimally to run it at frame rate and, and keep it something that, that's fun to play is um, the the less thinking that they have to do the better so the more you can centralize any any of the thinking or, or any of the decision making or any any of the, the the physical movement if you can centralize that so not every creature is making that choice it, it leads to improvement when, when players come across a horde in the world what what they don't realize is really the, the challenge is making 500 Horde not look like they're all working together under the exact same brain. So it's about creating clusters or subgroups from this main Horde that are kind of more local. So if some of them are down here by the water, they've got their clusters figuring out how to, how can I have a, a hundred of these people perform animations pulling from water without it really being a drag on the main system. So it's kind of sharing those animations and those decisions across multiple members and, and just making a few decisions on in this at this cluster level. And then, so we've got this really cool trick, and that is conversion. So we promote members of the horde into swarmer classes, and it, it allows them to have all the full functionality of everything, where you can melee kill them, you can you can grapple them, you can stealth interact with them, you can tag them with the binoculars, you can do everything you can a normal swarmer, and it, it really kind of helps us keep up the 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 look of the massive horde, but kind of have that that fidelity of interaction up close. And it's more than just getting a number of characters. So there's those technical hurdles there and trying to figure out. And, and it's a lot of work from all across teams. So it's not just a, a, a programmer sitting in a room trying to figure out this, right? It's working with animators and, and you know, the character artists and, and the designers and how they build out these areas that the horde's going to be. So it's like this, it's a total team effort to really make this thing happen. And, and that, you know, includes the behaviors, getting the behaviors right, and, and making them feel good and feel like they are in these individual characters that are coming after you specifically. So once we figured out how we could have a, a, a central brain running all of the horde and what they needed to do, um, their bodies still had to figure out how to do it. They needed to look different as well. You know, they still needed to animate, they needed to render, they, and, and when you have 500 creatures, you, they can't all be unique, but they have to have a lot in common. And, and the real struggle was finding small, small variations to, to make to them that at scale would look like infinite variety, even though there's a very common, a very small pool of, of kind of common resources. So everything from scaling the size of the creature just, just up one-tenth of a meter or down one-tenth of a meter and it, it led to subtle variety amongst the entire group so people no longer look like identical twins. You know, these, these guys didn't start their animations at the same time so they don't look like they're, they're kind of working together in some sort of synchronized dancing or swimming. And um, just changing the, the, the height of the character changed their, their walk stride. So automatically you get different movement speeds. You know, a lot of variances between those but when the characters are there's basically a foot difference between the shortest guy and the tallest guy by scaling that way. So you get everybody just running at different offset speeds and they, they start in different places with their animation poses and they look different. So you can look at a bunch of guys standing in line and they don't look alike at all. I 
really, really like the idea of a mutation. So again, this is why we, we say they're freakers, is because they're alive. And narratively, the way the, the way the horde works is it's just like every other freaker in the game in that it's a human being and it has this virus that mutates it in a specific way. So creating a creature type that is alive and exists in an open world, and I think that's the real key. That's the thing that makes Days Gone unique is the fact that it's not just sitting at the, at the old sawmill, but they will go into those buildings and hibernate during the day, then they'll come out at night, then they'll go down to the watering hole where the you know where the log pond is and drink, and then they, they migrate around. All 40 hordes in the open world do that. So narratively, it was just you know creating a new enemy type that made sense in the fiction of the world, but it also um, made for awesome gameplay. So I mean, when you have when you have so many systems at play, um, trying to find the balance between all of those interactions is is definitely a challenge. Um, we knew from the beginning what we wanted to do and all of the different elements. Um, and the exciting thing is we actually got there. Um, but getting all of those things to work together, finding that balance with everything, making sure that you know this thing isn't happening too often, or the player's not getting you know ambushed uh, too many times within a short period of time. Uh, we went through a lot of testing and. Uh, gameplay tuning and stuff uh, to kind of find that happy medium with everything. What we found through early development was like the horde seemed hard. There were a lot of them. They were coming at us all the time. But uh, when we had some users playing it for the first time, we realized that more of them were beating it than we liked uh, so easily on the first playthrough. And you know, it's not meant to be impossible, but it's meant to, it was meant to be more challenging than that. So I, I, after analyzing kind of the, the video and looking at, at the problem. What we realized was the horde was, or just you know, just come straight at the player. That's all it does. It, it was coming to the player too straight. You know, there was no, there was no kind of like varied thinking. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's not like a swarm mentality. It's a tidal wave mentality. But we needed the tidal wave to kind of uh, not be so focused because the player just had to aim down his sights and just shoot at, at these guys, at the the horde coming at him, and he didn't have to move very far left or right. And we realized that was the problem. The player doesn't have to think. There's no tension. He does. You know, he just has to. He, he doesn't have to worry about what's over here, or what's over here, or what he can't see anymore. So just by taking the the, the front line of the horde, the, the column length, and just spreading it out a little bit further, all of a sudden the player now has to start to manage and, and kind of bookkeep. Where hey, did I see a run off over here? Where did he go? He disappeared. I can't see him. Oh crap! Even though I've got distance here, but where I can still shoot these guys, I don't know where that guy is, and he's going to come up on me and he's going to knock me. He's gonna hit me, and then I'm gonna be I'm gonna be recovering by the time this horde is on top of me. It just gets in the player's head. So, from a design perspective, I think we broke some design rules. <laughs> the horde was was wildly unpredictable, um, and they would come at you from every different angle. Uh, and unleashing that on the open world with all of the other systems that we have in play. It was just exciting to see it all work together. You know, um, there was definitely challenges in balancing everything and making sure that it didn't become too overwhelming for the player. Uh, but in some cases, we want it to be overwhelming because we're building a dangerous world and we want the player to feel uneasy about situations. Sometimes it creates that tension uh, that I think players really enjoy when they when they buy into a game. The Horde, is, as an entity in Days Gone, is its own thing. And in some ways, and again, this is feedback we've gotten from many, 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 many hours of testing, is that uh, the Horde, it's, it's meant to be an end game, but that doesn't mean you can't interact with it or, or track them down and seek them out and try to take them on. We've had players, um, you know, very early in the game come across Hordes because they're alive, they're in the open world, they are always there. So they're there to be found if you want to track them down. My advice is always run. Because the first time you've run into a horde, I don't care who you are, you're going to get slaughtered um, early in the game. But by the time you get to the end of the game, the horde represents your ability to be transformed into, as a player, something that's that someone who's powerful enough, clever enough, and you know, and smart enough. It's a thinking man's game. So to beat the horde, you have to transform yourself as a player. And that's one of the things I'm really excited about, honestly, is to see how players, once they get into the game and they realize this, they're like, Almost always, if you saw any of our preview footage of people playing the game, they're like, this is crazy. I'm never going to be able to beat this. But eventually, you figure out how. But that level of tension and, and honestly, anxiety that continues to bring, it doesn't go away. No matter how advanced of a player you are, how long we've been playing this game for a long time internally, 
those moments still elevate your blood pressure. You're just wa watching somebody play or you're playing it yourself and it's just, it just keeps building and building and building. And to me, that's really super exciting. Really honestly, all these optimizations at the end of the day, are they're interesting from a technical point of view. There's a lot of kind of secrets and, and kind of how we achieved it, but the reason that we're trying to put 500 creatures on screen at once and the reason why it's important is because it's a terrifying experience for the player. I mean, it, it all serves that purpose. And I, and I really do fully expect to be surprised by emergent moments and, and strategies that the players come up with and just payoffs that, that we theoretically know are in the game, but are just there's the, vari the variables are so vast and th there's so many different things that can happen. I just want to see how they happen and how players respond and, and how good a time they have.